storm warning. NOAA forecasters estimate a 90% chance of geomagnetic storms on January 9, when a CME is expected to hit Earth's magnetic field. The speed of the solar wind around Earth could spike to 700 km as 1.6 million mph shortly after the impact, sharply compressing Earth's magnetosphere. High-latitude sky watchers should be alert for auroras. Aurora alerts, text, voice. Huge sunspot, chance of flares, the source of the incoming CME is R1944, one of the largest sunspots of the current solar cycle. The active region sprawls across more than 200,000 km of solar terrain and contains dozens of dark cores. The largest could swallow Earth three times over. R1944 is circled in this January 9th snapshot from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. As the image shows, the sunspot is almost directly facing Earth. This makes it a threat for geoffective eruptions. NOAA forecasters estimate an 80% chance of M-class flares and a 50% chance of 10 flares on January 9th. Solar Flare Alerts, Text, Voice Real-time space weather photo gallery space weather balloon launched, energetic protons are swirling around Earth this week. The ongoing radiation storm was triggered by a 10-class solar flare on January 7th, and two days later it is still going strong. To study the effects of the S3 category storm on Earth's atmosphere, yesterday the students of Earth to Sky Calculus launched a space weather balloon from the Sierra Nevada Mountains of Central California, lofted by approximately 200 cubic feet of helium, the balloon ascended to an altitude of approximately 110,000. Its payload contained an X-ray gamma ray dosimeter, a GPS altimeter, and a cryogenic thermometer. Together these instruments can form a complete thermal and radiation profile of the atmosphere throughout the flight. Of special interest are aviation altitudes i.e., between 5 km and 15 km where planes carry human passengers through the storm. The students want to find out how much ordinary air travelers are exposed during an event like this. The balloon popped as planned on January 8th and the payload parachuted back to Earth landing in a remote corner of Death Valley National Park. The students will recover the payload and its data on January 9th. Stay tuned for results.